September brings in all of the new laws in Texas for 2019, so what does that mean for firearms owners? This year, 2019, the Texas legislature passed a number of new firearm-related bills. All of those bills made it to the governor, and all of them were signed by Governor Abbott. So I'm going to go ahead and go down the list of all of them and explain what all of them mean and what the relevance to you are. So before I get into this, I'm just going to tell you that if you have any questions about them, you should look these up yourself or ask a lawyer about them. This is just my interpretation of them. I am not a lawyer and this is not legal advice. Okay, now that I've got the disclaimers out of the way, let's go down the list. House Bill 121. This bill provides a legal defense for LTC holders who unknowingly pass a 3006 or 3007 sign as long as they promptly leave as soon as they are informed about it. So pretty much if you accidentally go into a place that has a legal sign on the door telling you not to carry there and you didn't see it and someone inside tells you, hey, we had a sign on the door, you can't carry here and you leave right away, you don't get charged with anything. So that's good. Just don't go around like accidentally not seeing signs, guys. I mean, come on. House Bill 302. This one prohibits no firearms clauses in residential lease agreements. So your landlord cannot put a clause in your lease saying that you can't have firearms there. They can't put anything in there restricting you from carrying your firearms from your vehicle back to your residence. This specifically mentions places like apartments and mobile home parks. Now there still can be public areas and a number of multifamily units and mobile home parks. Um, they can restrict you from carrying there um, outside of you going straight from the actual unit you live in to your vehicle. This also specifically mentions future leases so if there is an existing lease that has that in there, you're still stuck with it until that lease changes. House Bill 1143. So as you know, you can't carry on the school premises, so you have to keep your firearm in your vehicle. A lot of school districts were making rules that were so restrictive about how you had to store it in your vehicle that it was effectively keeping anybody from being able to keep one in their vehicle. Well, that's all gone now. They can't restrict how you store it in your vehicle. It just has to be in your vehicle and the vehicle locked up. House Bill 1177. Now, this one was getting a lot of attention. This is that during a time of emergency, this is usually going to be like a natural disaster. Everyone that lives in that disaster area for a period of one week is able to carry firearms on them whether they have a license to or not. They just can't be legally restricted from owning a firearm. The idea being that you may be having to move your firearms out of a place, you may have to just be protecting yourself there, and it's not reasonable to expect emergency services to be able to show up when you're in the middle of a massive flood or something. House Bill 1791. It restricts state, local, and municipal governments from restricting firearms on property owned or leased by said government. So a city or county or some state agency can't put up a sign restricting you from carrying on the property there. Now before you get too excited about this one, your regular list of places that you can never carry at still count in here. So if it's like a city-owned stadium that there's a collegiate or professional sporting event going at, you're not going to be able to still carry there because that's explicitly stated. If it's some sort of government building that's being used as a polling place on election day, you can't carry there because that is specifically excluded. House Bill 3231. Now this one gets a little complicated, but in a nutshell, city and county governments cannot essentially stop firearms from being sold by making zoning laws that make it impossible to have them there. Basically what would happen is they weren't able to completely restrict firearms, so they would just make zoning laws that were enforced over the whole city or the whole county that made it impossible to do those type of sales there. So that's all prohibited now. 
Senate Bill 535 removes something that was a bit of a um, inconsistency in the law there. Now, there was a place in the firearms code that mentioned that churches, synagogues, and other places of worship were places that you could not carry at, and another spot in there that said explicitly that they weren't, so kind of had one spot saying that you could carry and another spot saying that you couldn't and it was confusing and there were a lot of people being charged with carrying in places and then having to use the other side of it as a legal defense out of it so basically that's just all gone now and you can carry there unless they put up 3006 or 3007 signs senate bill 741 pertains to property owners and homeowners associations basically an hoa or a poa cannot restrict you from having guns in your house they can't make any type of rules about how you have to store them in your house they can't make rules about you carrying it from your vehicle and back so basically they can't restrict how you carry that all in your own home now they can still restrict you from carrying and the places there that are open to everybody in there like a swimming pool or a gazebo or something but they can no longer make any type of rules pertaining to how you store them or how you have the guns in your own house this also applies to ammunition as well as firearms so they thought about that too senate bill 772 basically you can't sue a business because they don't put a 3006 or 3007 sign up there. There were apparently businesses that were having to deal with these frivolous lawsuits where people are like, I felt scared in there because they didn't stop people from carrying in there. And I can't deal with things like that because I'm, I'm just, I can't. So I somehow managed to accidentally pass up House Bill 2363. This one pertains to foster parents. Previously, foster parents were required to store guns and ammunition in separate locked locations. Now with this bill, guns and ammunition can be stored in the same locked location. It can even be a loaded gun in that locked location. That way they can get to it quickly should the need arise for them to have it for self-protection. And since this last one here has gotten a lot of attention, I'm going to go ahead and address it, even though it isn't a law that went into effect. And this is basically the statewide safe gun storage campaign. Now, let me tell you what this is and what it is not. This is not the government making any type of safe storage laws about firearms. What this is, is the government giving a grant to the National Shooting Sports Foundation as part of Project Child Safe. It's basically a campaign just to promote safely storing your guns. This is not anything that requires anybody to actually do any type of safe storage. It's just saying, hey, it would probably be a good idea, especially if you have kids in the house, to store your guns where they can't get to them. And that's true. That's actually a good thing to do that. Now, you can argue if it's a good idea for the government to be handing money over to do that, but that is a separate argument. Now, this last bill that I'll go over isn't firearm related, but it's something to pass through the Texas legislature that I thought I would go ahead and mention. That would be House Bill 234, better known as the Lemonade Stand Bill. So because of licenses for vendors who were selling food out of stands at different places, it was technically illegal for kids to operate a lemonade stand without going through the process to get the license and the permit for that, which none of them ever did because, hey, it's kids selling lemonade. And while most cities never bothered to actually crack down on it because, hey, it's just kids making some money for a trip or something, just leave them alone. Well, somebody would always try to do that. And there was one Texas city that did it and it ended up being a big PR nightmare. And the state legislature decided, all right, enough of that. 
kids can now sell lemonade or other non-alcoholic beverages at a stand by their house. So, good for lemonade. So, I hope that you found this video useful. If you did, be sure to like or comment. You can let me know that you like this type of thing in there. You can also, if you're interested, subscribe to my channel to see all the videos that I post and not miss anything that I put out there. I'm Jeremy with Poindexter G, and we'll see you next time.